Welcome to another fun episode of TFL Talking Trucks. And this is actually a part two. It's a continuation of what we've done in the previous episode. In the previous episode, we talked about super trucks or the very top trucks going all the way up to midsize, but that took over an hour. <laughs> and we so, decided you know, we had to split it up. Right. So this is going to cover the rest of the trucks. But, but this is not everything we're talking about. No. Uh, uh, we want to thank you guys because something amazing happened over the last like week and a half or two mm. weeks. Yeah. Uh, we gained an crazy number of Patreons. And I think you're, you're one of the big reasons, actually, Nathan. Is, is the calendar of me with the bathing suits? No, that wasn't it wasn't. Even published yet, no, right? no, that's not published. Okay. No, that was that's you're joking. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> I don't want to turn them away. And no, no, them. no, no, like, no, no. Uh, uh, so we we we've, we've always had Patreon, right? Yeah. Uh, for almost ten years, right? Mm -hmm. Patreon.com/slash/tflcar, and you know that's a place for us to communicate. You can ask us questions and. Provide feedback. We're, we, you get direct answers very quickly from us in that way. But we've been doing something else recently. Mm. We, we've been publishing early access videos. So mm -hmm. stuff that goes on some of our channels like truck, off-road channels, car channels, mm -hmm. EV channels, classics channels. We're putting early access videos just for the Patreons. Right. And we recently published uh, Go Big Again Episode 4 preview only for Patreons, not publicly. Yeah. And... There was a big announcement in that in that video, and we, we like twenty five people joined our Patreon in like a week. Wow, which has never happened before. That so, is phenomenal. That really helps us do what we're doing right yeah. here. So, um, I am Jeffo Brian Schiffler Stephanie. Uh, sorry, I, I'm going to mess up some of these names. No, no, I'm looking. Go um, ahead, keep going. Um, Stephanie Robert Evans, the humongous. Jamie, Anthony, Vance, Ryan McCauley, P701, Ryan Rester, Abel Castro, Colt Litsey, Ansu Kumar, Frank Roach, Luis Valdez, Chris Lynn Loveland, Jonathan Wyatt. This, this is just like a few days. This has been incredible support. But what's the announcement? Why are they people joining? Well, technically speaking, it's three announcements if you think about it. Actually, there are, there are yeah, several. There are several. Uh, do we do the big one first or we do just kind of work up? No, let's work up. Okay. So first announcement is Andre will be the new owner of an old SUV. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so this has happened at TFL for years, Several times. since the origination of TFL. Pretty much. That whenever TFL as a company buys a vehicle, maybe for long-term testing, be it new or used, mm -hmm. uh, employees like us, we, we're able to pick it up from the company when the company is done with that vehicle, right? Now, when we do the videos. That's right. And uh, Roman's always very fair about that. I mean, we don't get, usually, usually, we don't get very many d deep discounts, but he sells them at a fair price. Or to usually, us. something we get like, crack. if the company is usually does pretty well at, you know, getting value things. Yeah. Um, and so it's either the same price that the company paid or slightly less. Right? Exactly. So amazing. Hey, podcast listeners and TFL Talk viewers. I wanted to take a minute to talk to you about a quick and simple way to sell your car or truck with the help of our new partner, High Road. With High Road's online portal, you enter your vehicle's VIN number or plate, mileage, and zip code, and you'll get competing offers from several qualified dealers in your area within seconds. You pick the best deal offered and follow through with the dealer to sell your vehicle. No more managing scammy emails from buyers on Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace. No more time wasted on no-show buyers. No bait and switch with a, will you take a check excuse from sketchy buyers. Now keep in mind, these offers will be for trade-in values of your vehicle. If you want to go through the hassle of getting more for your vehicle, that's up to you. But if you want to sell your vehicle hassle-free and fast, go to tfltruck.com and click Sell Your Truck in the navigation menu. Or click on the High Road ad at the bottom of the website if you're on mobile, or click on the column if you're on a desktop. High Road makes it easy, and we like easy. So we picked up a few months ago, you probably uh, have seen it, uh, a 1998 Chevy Tahoe LT, which was a, mwah, I mean, 
pristine condition, even though it has 118,000 miles. You could tell the owner, A, garaged it, with, without a doubt. Because and the paint is still shiny. The paint is still absolutely, it looks factory. Yeah. The interior is in remarkably good shape. It runs like a top. There's Under the hood, there's no dust. There's no dust. I mean, it really, really was taking. It's one of those things where, you know, sometimes I'm, I'm a little lazy and I don't really go underneath a vehicle and stare at everything to make sure there's no rust or, you know, any pitting or anything like that. I really went under there and had a look because I wanted to prove Roman wrong when he told me this thing looked like it came out of a museum. I'm like, oh, no, 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 you're paying too much. Let me look. Dude, it, Dude it's, the frame it, was like untouched. It looks immaculate. They took, they washed it. They cared for it. The thing, everything about it is very new, and I am thrilled for you. Um, well, it's actually going to my dad. Yeah, but yes. it's, it's kind of going to you too. Yes, and uh, my dad is excited. You know, I've been talking to him about this, and he's kind of a Chevrolet fan, anyways. Yeah, I mean, he had a couple of Chevy Venture vans. He had the Cobalt uh, SS. Cobalt SS. Man, what a dude! <laughs> that was awesome. He was racing around, zooming around. Those things were really fast. Yes, and. Um, and now, so it's kind of like this classic metal, right? Mm -hmm. That looks amazing, and it's in red. It's yeah, red. Yeah, it's it's red yeah. with a kind of the, the cream interior. I think is no silver, like so a grayish oh, that's interior. Oh, right. it's a silver interior. Yeah. That's yeah. right. Yeah, like a silver interior, which yeah. is amazing. Yeah, but so it, anyway, yeah. I'm gonna buy it from the company. Yes. Yes. What's the second announcement? I'm gonna. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also buying an old uh, SUV from the company. Okay. I um and this is connected directly to the main announcement, I suppose. Um, so for those of you who don't know, I'm getting rid of the Santa Cruz. I no longer need no. it. No. Yeah, it, it's a perfectly okay. good little trucklet, but it uh, served its purpose. I've kept it now. By the time I get rid of it, it'll be um, a year and three quarters. You know, so right well, that's now that's a decent chunk of time. It's actually. a decent chunk of time. I wanted to keep it pretty much until the warranty ran out. Right, that was kind of my the way I was looking at it. But I don't need it for what its main purpose was. And its main purpose was a commuter. I drive between 41 and 45 miles each way to get to that's the office. That's a lot. Yeah. It is a lot. lot. And I put a ton of miles around. It's, it's up to oh, about 23,000 miles now. Um, but I don't need that car as a commuter. And I don't need a new car, right? Um, just a million reasons why. But the main one is this. You see, I'm not going to be commuting in Colorado anymore. Well, are you going to sleep at the office here, or what are, what are you doing? <laughs> if Roman let me, that would have made things so much easier. My wife would have been thrilled. No, um, what's going to happen is, and here, uh, drum roll, yeah, and TFL is going to be opening a branch in Southern California, and I'll be running it. Yes. I, I think it's about time. I mean, I'm going to, I'm not going <laughs> to <Bye>. see <laughs> No, that came out wrong. No, no, it's okay. No, no. Totally I'm going to miss you dearly because I won't see you, you know, every week or every day. But we'll be we really thing. need presence in more than one location geogra geographically. Okay, so to explain this, uh, this is how it all boils down. Uh, we do get quite a few trucks and some SU quite a few SUVs actually here in Colorado. But the fleets are rather narrow. And in terms of actual cars... And other vehicles. We you don't just want to drive Ferraris. Is I really that, do want to drive Ferraris, yes, especially in Southern California. <laughs> uh, was punching way above uh, my uh, financial weight. Um, so in California, the fleet services are much larger. This is inside baseball for you guys. So we're going to be able to get a lot of vehicles we weren't able to get here in the Rocky Mountain region Strictly because well, the fleets there are huge. Here's a couple of examples, right? Yeah, Let's say a new Corvette C8 is out, yes. which happened several years ago. Mm -hmm. And we're chomping at the bit, right? To, right? to tell you guys everything about the new Corvette. And then, bam, it's November. Mm -hmm. They can't send it here because it's on summer tires. Right. You know, and we're almost out of a car because we have to travel somewhere and it's difficult to do. Or, you know, we can't do everything we want to do. And now we have access to more cars and trucks. Almost every convertible that's being built, uh, I would say 90, maybe 80% of them will not show up here in Colorado. Uh, anything that's rear drive or just front drive, not many of those will just show up here. I mean, some of them will, but only certain versions of them. I know you guys like base models. We might be able to get our hands on a few base model vehicles out there. But it will rarely be trucks that I'm uh, uh, driving. They'll mostly be cars. And because of that, because of the amount of cars, and it'll just be me out there, 
Uh, I won't need a commuter like the Santa Cruz, hence getting rid of the Santa Cruz. And what are you buying? <laughs> the most inefficient vehicle I could possibly get my hands in on. In Los Angeles? In Los Angeles, where gas right now is between five and six bucks a gallon. Um, no, there's a very simple reason why I'm doing this. Um, I need something sturdy, reliable, and that can haul. And huge. Right. Uh, because I'm moving, right? I, I live in Colorado, and we're basically by Denver, and I need to move my family to Los Angeles. Um, there's a bunch of other things. I, I'm originally from Los Angeles. I have family there. My wife has a lot of family there. We miss them very much. So this is going to work out great for that. And um, there's a lot of other media that happens down in uh, that area. Events, yeah. Oh, tons of press events and whatnot yeah. that we rarely get invited to because sometimes automakers and other groups don't want to fly us out or anybody else out for that matter. They'd rather you be local. So we'll be able to cover a lot more events out there based on that as well. So anyway, so I have this expedition that I really fell in love. I just think it's just a good vehicle. And I know a lot of you guys are like, 5.4, oh, Nathan, you I was joking about that. Yes, the 5.4, it's, it's basically just used in trucks. But the good news is this is the two-valve, not the three-valve. And the two-valve is known as being pretty good. I, I, there are stories of um, uh, spark plugs being shot out, but... If you rethread them, uh, I believe if you reverse thread them or something like that, you can actually get them in there and really have them stay. But anyway, the two valve, they are known for being reliable. This thing has, I think, 120. 19 ish. 119,000. So also relatively low mileage. Relatively low yeah. mileage. It runs really it's good. It's a 97, this, by the way. Yeah, it's a 97, which is uh, one year young, older than yours. Yes. Uh, but the reality but, is, is that it's just a solid, good truck, and I need something that could hold a ton of stuff and tow. To, to get my family and I up and over the hills back to California. Well, there you go. There it is. So sorry, um, uh, that was kind of a, a long thing. The cat is out the bag. Yep. So uh, that's all going to happen this summer. So within the next two months, that's when everything – and we'll, we'll do a few more announcements, I think, leading up to that. Yeah, but sure. anyway, so yeah, it's going to happen. And yes, I'm still doing TFL stuff. I'll probably fly out here for some major events and everything else. And we'll figure it out as, th as time goes on. And in terms of podcasts, we're going to – play with the idea of maybe doing Skype or something like that. Uh, so we'll see. Yeah, yeah. And we'll be doing more interviews potentially. You know, Possibly. you can meet people out there. We oh, can yeah. meet people here. So stuff like that. So let's um, switch gears to our main event yes. uh, for this episode. Is uh, On part one, and you could listen to that on all your podcast uh, streaming services, mm -hmm. or, uh, of course, TFL Talk is our YouTube channel. And it should still be on all TFL.com. Uh -huh, yeah, because it was recent. Um we did, like you said, compact and mid-sized super trucks. And we're defining the word super in super trucks. It has to be special. Either additional power, additional suspension, additional look. Um, so all those elements have to do to make it kind of a super pickup truck. And we want to do half-ton trucks, basically, the full sizers and the heavy duties. And also electric. Yes. Now, uh, last time we did cover some other trucks that weren't were, were super ish, or perhaps just the very top of their class. Near super. Yeah, near super. <laughs> <laughs> but we're we're trying to avoid you know sticker packages or you know a paint package or something like that. We're we're definitely trying to look at something that gives it better performance. So let's start with this one. I think it potentially started this segment. Of mm. Super, okay, and it's the F one fifty Raptor. Oh, without a doubt. So it came out in twenty ten ish, mm -hmm. which is oh my gosh, fourteen fifteen years ago now. Yep. So and by that I mean it had special suspension. Of course, there were street performance trucks before that, right? And there were off road uh, performance trucks, but yeah. not to this level. Yeah, it kind of combined a lot of elements together. Right. Uh, a big V eight. I mean, originally it was a five four. Well, they had it, the well, and all, yeah. both engines were available. Yes, so the and big, the six two, the, the big one. Yeah, which um, the 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 five four. N n well, we were just talking about the five yes, four, yeah, and did. this is this basically a newer version of that. Um, not not a lot of power to move that thing. It was pretty heavy, really, really big, large, heavy tires. Uh, most people, including us, were pretty happy with the bigger uh, six two. Yeah, and then of course that was the first gen. The second gen really came out in 2017, 2018 time mm -hmm. frame. Then it was updated slightly within that time frame. And then 2021, the latest generation came out. And then now 2023, 2024, the Raptor R, which is 
the ultimate version of that truck, right? Oddly coming back to the V8 after they got rid of the V8 for yeah. two other cycles. Yeah. Um, Am amazing. I mean... The Raptor R is... It is... I said it before, and I absolutely mean it, based on just driving it. In a world where there's sledgehammers taking off-road, like a TRX... This is a scalpel that you take off road or samurai and sword. And it's not a very small scalpel. No, it's I mean, not it's small. It's a pretty at all, large but, one. But it's just it's a lot more precise mm -hmm. in every way. It's it's definitely a little bit more uh, agile, I would say. I would agree. And in addition to the fact that it just gives you every single thing you could possibly want in a super truck, right at that high level, the super advanced suspension, the super powerful advanced powertrain, which really is a one off, even though yeah, okay. It, there, you can find them in a certain Mustang. Really, it's a different powertrain. They changed a lot. Um, you know, everything yeah. about it is, is is unique. Yet, it's really the. But, but if I can, I just want to finish. Yeah, yeah. Um, the only thing about it, and I've said this before about other Ford products, is that there's very little to distinguish it externally from a regular Raptor. And I don't know if you're paying over a hundred thousand, one hundred nineteen. It's like one hundred nine. It's like yeah, but it. With a few options, it could be over 110. Okay. Um, and then, of course, dealers are now also oh, up, upcharging, of course, Of on course it. they are. Yeah. And I've said it before, and I'll say it again. I know a lot of you guys debate with me on this. Try to find another dealer if they're screwing you over, and absolutely put them on social media if they're totally screwing you over. Take a picture of the window sticker. Anyway, moving on. Um, the one thing about it, though, and the only thing that, that for me is like, eh, is the fact that it just doesn't look that much different than the regular Raptor, I, which the regular Raptor is awesome too, right? Yeah, I agree. And I would put both the regular Raptor and the Raptor R in the same super truck category. I mean, they're I both pretty unique. You know, they stand out. They have, you know, high output engines, you know, even the V6, twin turbo, EcoBoost is 450 For, horsepower. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we'll talk about upcoming competition, which is interesting yes. from Ram. Yes, indeed. Um, and I think the regular Raptor needs to step up now, now that the Ram RHO can kind of entered the world, you know, well, um, the, recently. Yeah, and so to, to go on to the Ram RHO, now we ha don't have driving. We don't have any wheel. No, 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 not driving yet. Yeah. Uh, we just saw it and And a really it. bad commercial, which is, on, or it's not a commercial, it's sort of a... It's like an introduction video. It's terrible, though. It really, it's, it's cring <laughs> it, I cringe. You know, our stuff is cringy. This is worse. Um, but the good news is they do show the vehicle running around. Now, the RHO, what is the RHO? It's, we don't know what it stands for. Maybe RAM high output. I thought it was really high output. Really high output or <laughs> Rebel high output. Anyway, oh, that, that it's, um, just before we dive straight into the RHO. Oh, do you want I to just, do the GM? I just, well, I just want to wrap up the Raptor really fast. Okay, okay. Um, the regular Raptor, I think, will be improved because I think it needs to compete a little bit more I, I'm sure with the RHO. I'm sure they'll tweak it. The Raptor R is still there for 2024. It's been updated. It's, it now produces 720 horsepower. They still build the uh, the Raptor 37, right? Uh-huh. Yeah, so that, that, that should be kind of in this little thing because there's technically three Raptors. Exactly. There's a lot of choice in that space. Yeah. Um, you can get it with a 35-inch tall tire. You can get a 37, 37-inch tall tire. It's Which is the, a very different truck. From the factory. Right. Yes. Um, it has different shocks, you know, different, you know, articulation. Everything is designed around that tire. Right. So, so the 37 is, in its own way, a bit of a unique truck. And we've tested it. it, it it's just as good, in my mind, as the 35 Perhaps it's a little tiny bit slower, but I, I really I don't think it's. I'm it much. doesn't slow it down much. Yeah. I mean, we've tested them many, many times. Right. Um, and by the way, at the end of this episode, we, you and I have to pick another favorite. Okay. So we need to, as we're moving through, uh, as you're listening and watching us, also think of your favorites as well. Yeah, I'm curious to what, what you what, guys think about your favorite? your favorite trucks. Super trucks, you know, money, no object. We're not going to sit here and go to on. Yeah, on you just about, won the lottery. Yeah, um, yeah, or two. It takes two lotteries <laughs> to win. You got to buy some of these. <laughs> We're not going to talk about price. Okay, let's continue. So yeah, so that's. I think Ford still has a very strong position, even though their base Raptor on thirty fives starts at around eighty one thousand uh dollars, -huh. which is already a pretty steep entry. Yes, uh, into this world, and like we said, Raptor R is around like what one ten ish plus. You know, a couple of different options plus maybe markups. So, why is that significant though? There is a good reason, and that comes back to RAM. The price? Yeah. Well, do you want to just jump to RAM? Let's let's do it. Let's. I think let's so jump because in. I think it, it it kind of 
encapsulates this. We will talk about Chevrolet and, and GMC in a second, but this is really on the higher end in terms of overall performance. One of the things about the Ram, okay, the Ram RHO, in my mind, is essentially a TRX with a different powertrain. Um, that's, that's a really great way to think about it. Yeah, that's the, the suspension is very similar to the TRX. It looks a lot like a TRX. However, it has the high output Hurricane twin turbocharged three liter straight six. Now, that comes, I believe, it's hooked to the eight speed automatic still, right? They're just it, absolutely it, sticking with that. Exactly. Um, yes. But I mean, the the power numbers are impressive, and there are other numbers that are interesting as well, right? Yeah. So, the TRX came out in twenty twenty one. Right. Right. That was really Ram's answer to the Raptor, but they leapfrogged. You know, back in 2021, mm -hmm. there was no Raptor R, right? Right. It, it was a twin turbo uh, V6 Ford F-150 Raptor. And of course, other trucks existed. You know, we can talk about GM in a second and Toyota. <clears throat> but the TRX had a, that supercharged V8, bam, big punch. Right. But now the TRX is being discontinued. I mean, they, they had to get built, rid of the Hemi. Yeah. The Hemi, the V8s are going away. It's largely, I think, is due to the regulations for emissions and efficiencies. Cafe numbers. Too, right. Yeah, all Cafe that stuff. fleet numbers. So now they have a new power plant, which I'm actually pretty excited about. It's the Hurricane Straight 6. Mm -hmm. uh, the high output produces 540 horsepower. <laughs> Which is already a big chunk of horsepower. Yeah, and that's way more than the regular Ford Raptor. Keep that in mind. Yeah, 450 versus 540. That's a big jump. Yeah, it's already. nearly 100 horsepower. Now, that straight six in the new RHO, yes, it, it has a lot of the same suspension components and mm -hmm. the body of um, TRX. Basically, yeah. But it removes 150 pounds from the truck. Which is also big. So we're talking about performance. I would imagine that will help it with its one thing I always felt was an issue is that it was so front heavy that going around corners on dirt, not, not so much on asphalt. And heavy, period. Yeah, it was just really... It, I think the curb weight of the TRX was near 6,400 pounds, yeah. which is a chunk. <laughs> that's a big, heavy For vehicle. a half-ton truck, that's yeah. a heavy truck. And yeah. that had to do mostly with the suspension and all the extra equipment it has to hold that suspension and armor, right? Yes. So uh, I think that the RHO, which little rhino thing, a lot of people like to call it the rhino or whatever. Which yeah, I, I think it's a cool animal to be related to. I think so, too. Yeah. Uh, rhino is, by the way, my favorite animal. It is absolutely sweet. Uh -huh. uh, anyway, so, so, so are you going to buy an RHO soon? Um, <laughs> yeah, because I'm going in, to. I'm in, already. In yeah, I'm already bringing a vehicle to LA that gets at and, best 16 miles per gallon. Yeah, that's no. And then you're buying a home potentially that's really expensive. Yeah, uh, we're going to rent for a while before okay, we okay. try to buy anything there. It's yeah, prices are basically three times what they are here. I think it's a simple way to put that, it. That's insane. It is insane. Okay. So anyway, moving, long story. Moving on. <laughs> move, please, let's move on. I, I'm still terrified. Um, okay, so the RHO, why is it so significant? What pricing do they release on it? Well, before destination, 69995 With destination, 71900 And how much is the Raptor base? Almost eighty one. So right. it's like nine grand less. Nine grand less. More and horsepower. More horsepower. The the now we agree that the suspension system, although perhaps not quite as trick as Ford, is probably as good off road. I would say they're pretty close. Yeah, and and retuned for the lighter weight. Exactly. It still doesn't beat the Ford on weight. Ford's all aluminum body. That makes a difference. Is really it? really important there. Yeah. Uh, but still, removing 150 pounds, it's a, it's a big deal. And having deal. nearly 100 horsepower more. Yeah. So the bottom line is that it seems like, God, I'm sorry, guys. It's not a bargain, but it is a bargain if you compare it to yeah, the Ford Yeah, in this space, Raptor. it is a bargain. Right. Yeah. And that is what's so important. And later on, we're going to talk about General Motors. Remember, $71,000 for this thing with all the, basically with destination and everything else, right? Okay. Then that's... Provided that you don't get screwed at the dealership, that's a whole different thing. Right. We don't know this because you could order the RHO now, mm -hmm. and there was a small glitch in their system. So, But but it's still orderable. You could still, Ram tells me, you can call any dealership in, in the country. I'm not sure about Canada uh, timing yet. Mm -hmm. But at least in the U.S., you could order an RHO, and they will come in the third quarter of this year being delivered. So that's just a few months away. Um. Where am I going with this? Oh, there's going to be another luxury version of the RHO, like kind of a little bit step up in technology. Mm -hmm. It will help. It will have the uh, RHO with a premium pack. Will have hands-free driving tech. 
that the Raptor never had, actually. Interesting. So that's one little thing that Ram is throwing in there Yeah. Um, for the RHO as well. If Ram can continue this uh, price war and, and continue bringing in vehicles well under the competition, yes, their profit margins will shrink a bit, but I think that they'll bring in a new crowd of people who will be like, oh, okay, I can save $10,000 and buy something that is as good, at least on paper, or better. That, I think, would be a really good strategy. And also, strategy. they'll pressure GM and others and Ford to lower their prices, maybe. That's what all, so, yeah, yeah. all the boats rise when you know certain things happen. So anyway, uh, look, what this is this, we haven't had a chance to drive it yet, so I can't sing its accolades. I can only tell you about, on paper, things are looking very promising. Yes. Um, I Once again, doesn't look that much different than the previous truck. But because of those big fenders and the way they designed it, I think it's still a pretty damn good-looking truck. And I'm looking forward to TFL really ringing it out. Now, an important segue, if we're done with that, going to General Motors. Yeah, let's let's do this. Okay. Now, we've had, we owned the uh, Chevrolet um, 1500 ZR2. We didn't have the Bison. We had the regular ZR2. No, right? the ZR2, when it came out in 22. Yeah, mm -hmm. we were one of the we first people snacked to... Snacked one up. Yep. And um, brought it. we got it at MSRP, brought it back here. It was 72000 almost the same price as the RHO. That's where I was going. And that's for... I'm sorry, I took your thunder there. No, 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 no. no. Okay. You, you actually added to it because... Once again, it's one of those questions of, now look, the ZR2 is really good. A couple of reasons why. Uh, basically the same exact thing, but larger uh, in terms of the Colorado ZR2. Front and rear lockers, uh, yes. very powerful power trend. By the way, the RHO and the current Raptor do not have a front locker. No, they don't. They, they use to... brake distribution to kind of slow that down. Right. Uh, and they're really not rock crawlers per se, which no. if you're rock crawling, having a front locker would be nice. But the uh, ZR2 has a little bit more crawly side to it. Actually. Exactly. Well, for one thing, it doesn't stick out wide on the sides because it doesn't have that type. It doesn't need the, the big tires and the articulation. It has, however, uh, a setup that still has um, spool valve suspension, the DSSV. Yes. And we can attest that that is a very good compromise. It's you don't touch anything, right? It, it just does it all. You don't adjust it. Yeah, no. it just works. It, it just works, and it does its job for dampening. Some people might think it's a little stiff on the road. I think that under load, it's really good. But regardless, you put that on this big truck with a 6.2 liter V8, which I believe current is the diesel available? Yeah. Yes. Yes, it is, it is. With the diesel, I think that this truck is unique and special because now you have range and decent mileage for like four, okay. 500 miles easy on a tank. That, easy. that suddenly works. Yes. You know, if you're actually serious about, oh, I'm going to go overlanding, which, you know, camping. Um, yes, you can do it much better in something that has a diesel powertrain because usually better range. So this is a little bit of controversial uh, point because a lot of commenters, and maybe you guys right now are typing this in, that GM did not meet Ford and Ram. They did not compete. You know, they don't have a wide body truck. Which we were expecting uh, to see, by the way, which we never did see. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. So that's that's a general complaint that people have. Uh, we've asked GM about this many times. Mm -hmm. They say, kind of like what you mentioned, that this truck is maybe more usable for many, many more tasks. For example, in the mountains here in Colorado, we have lots of trees and lots of huge giant rocks. Um, you have to have a su somewhat narrow vehicle to put it through a trail. Absolutely. This is why I usually prefer mid-sized trucks with off-roading. That's why I say they are superior because they have a smaller footprint and yeah. because it's, they're more, they're more nimble yeah, right. in general. But if you have to go up a step, you can get to this ZR2. Now, the ZR2 still has decent towing and decent uh, payload. Yeah, right? the payload suffers a bit. Oh, yeah? How much? Yeah, um, it's around, it's just over, I'm talking about the Bison now. Right. Um, and also the 84X AEV package. Which we'll talk about. They, they're near 1,000 pounds. That's no bueno. Um, if you look at the RHO or even the Base Raptor, those are approaching 1,500 pounds of payload. So they're actually building in payload in those trucks. 
GM needs to do better on this. Uh, agreed. Point. So that's probably its weakest point. Would be yeah. would you not I think agree? Payload. Because everything else about it's fantastic. Yeah, it tows over eight thousand pounds. Right. Put behind it. It tows great. Those shocks still work really well. Yes, they do. Um, it has great precision, like you said, on road. Really incredible precision with the suspension. It, incredible grip. The tires are good. Yeah, they're not thirty fives. They're thirty threes. They're thirty threes. Yeah, and I, but GM yeah. seems to be okay with that. Yeah, you know, uh, are the customers okay with that? Well, I, I mean, you the, be the judge. But I think you can easily stuff 35s in there without even lifting it, without a problem. Maybe. Maybe in the front it might be a little bit tough. In the, rear, in the rear it could be easier to do. Ooh. But, uh, I mean, the truck is, the, you know, it's becoming more and more difficult to modify that brand new vehicle. Just all the computer systems, the camera systems, the radar that they put in this, these trucks. That's a good point. They're yeah. really meant for those tires that are built with. You, you may actually have to reflash the thing just to have it think. So we'll have to wait and see if the RHO pressures GM in some way to either increase tire size or do something else on their trucks. So the GM guy I talked to... Um, who is a contemporary of this guy, Joe Jacuzzi, who we, uh, seriously, that's his name, uh, but it's one of the guys who worked with him. Sure. Uh, he and I sat down, we were, we were over a drink, we were just talking off, you know, off the record, but on the record. And one of the things, because I went after him, said, listen, we were promised at one point something that would eat the uh, Ford Raptor, and you guys definitely hinted at that, and it never came. And he looked at me, and he said, yes, it did. You just totally didn't get it. And I said, what the hell? Are you, what? what? What are you talking about? He said, the Hummer. The new Hummer. The GMC Hummer. Yes. Outperforms the Ford Raptor and all the other ones in many ways. And I, it took a second, right? Because I, I had to think about it. And it's like, okay, well, I guess that's a point. If you think about it, a lot of the R&D that went into the Hummer, which is in many ways a very incredible vehicle. I'm not a big fan of it personally because if it's just so heavy and its footprint is weird off-road, and also reliability was an issue before, but supposedly a lot of those things are fixed except for the weight. But if you look at it on paper as a truck, and it is technically a pickup, yep. it is a super truck, right? Yeah. So that's General and Motors' answer to the Raptor and to the TRX. Yeah, thanks for bringing it up. It's slightly in a separate category because Agreed. it's all electric. Exactly. But it is super. A it, thousand, it is. A thousand horsepower, my friend. I mean, we've been talking about 720. Oh, no problem. A thousand horsepower. On the it, is, it does weigh 9,000 pounds. It's over if you put the spare it, tire yes. on it. Yes. Um, on, on the drag strip, we, we put larger tires on ours. What do we put, 37s? Yeah, on which actually GM actually has a calibration for. So we use GMC's dealership to do that. Right, exactly. It looked... Pretty incredible. Actually, it looked better on 37s. It, what it does at the racetrack, it was like lowered itself all the way down, and it almost was touching the tires. It looked it looked like a toy. It didn't look real. But it is stupid fast, at least to 100 miles per hour, and then it kills I think it. it is limited. It's so either 100, 99 or 100, yeah. and it's really due to the tires. Yeah, really. exactly. Um, but... The, yeah, okay, fair enough. You know, I, I get it. This is what you put a lot of your money into. Hence, the reason why you didn't have develop some sort of special ZR2 off-road package to go up against the Raptor. I get that. So you, you essentially have to shrug and say, okay, well, General Motors, in my mind at least, they're not going to come up with a direct response to the RHO or the Raptor. They have this. The only issue I have is the fact that the price of the um, ZR2 is right there with the RHO. And honestly... I think that that's kind of hard to it, it's justify. Hard to, yeah, yeah, how yeah. do you justify that, right? I I know that there's a lot of material that goes in there, but maybe some people and some people are like, you know, what? I don't need to justify it. I have a really cool truck that can do everything off road, you know. So be it. Um, well, here's how you justify it, my friend. Mm. You buy an orange Hummer 2X truck EV. 2, 2X. Uh, Double X? Is it, they better uh, bigger somehow? N- no. Uh, I'll explain it. <laughs> okay. l- let me explain this. Please do. So the Hummer launched as the edition one, right? It was the, it was, they're all in white. <laughs> well, they're supposed to resemble like the Apollo 11 type thing. Yeah, whatever. it's supposed to be like the moon mission for yeah. them, right? The, basically, they moon put, shot. Yeah, all of the technology in one, right? Mm-hmm. Air suspension, four wheel steering, a thousand horsepower, tri motor electric system. Removable hardtop. Mostly. It's, it's mostly convertible. Yeah. Yes. Um, then uh, 
that is now done. Now the next version was called 3x because it's three means three motors. X is X because X is cool. X means off road all. Um, so 3x came out already, mm -hmm. and it's basically similar powertrain to the Edition One, except it doesn't have all the maybe the fanciest stuff that the Edition One had. Lower price point, and then 2x is a two motor system. So now the 2x is one motor in the front, one in the rear, and X is still just a cool letter, I guess. So same battery size throughout. I believe so. So you're now picking up more range, and because you don't have as much horsepower, right, and mm -hmm. as, ma as many motors, and you're not as heavy uh, either, and you're not as heavy. So, so, but still, um, sorry, uh, it still a hundred thousand for the two X. <laughs> yeah, uh, what a deal. Uh, no, yeah. I mean, it's it's it it the tech is incredible. I'll tell you, next to the Cybertruck, which we will of course talk about, uh, in terms of curbside appeal and. Um, Something that gets people's attention, kids' attention, kids when and, you and drive, adult kids, yeah, kids that are adults. The thing, it, once again, it looks like a Tonka toy. It looks, you know, and and people uh, are attracted to that. It's everything the old Hummer was visually, but it's even cooler looking. And I give them absolute credit for that. It looks, I think, incredible. The interior is a great layout. Um, I think maybe one of the best ones out there in terms of the interior. Everything else about it that I'm not very happy with, obviously. I've well, price is one, of course. Obviously, price. I mean, but yeah, it, it matches. It's really heavy, and there's it's it's it was a little glitchy, and you can't have that off road. And honestly, driving something like that that that's heavy that that is that heavy off road, its track is a little weird, right? So if you're driving a Jeep or almost any other midsize vehicle, Jeeps obviously do off roading a lot. So your trails are a little bit closer to a Jeep or even a Bronco size. Because they've, they've gone on those trails and they kind of set the ruts, right? That's exactly it. So when you take the Hummer on that, I noticed that it straddles a lot of that and it has issues fitting through spaces. It's not very long, but it is very wide. So, yes, Super Truck, they did amazing work with some of the tech and now they're really sorting it out from what I hear but it's still, and they're offering more variations. Yes, right? they are, which I think all of that is very smart. But the other side of it, of course, is the fact that it is really heavy and really expensive. Okay. Yeah, and they have a cool orange color that that's you really called like that orange, don't Afterburner you? Tin Coat. Okay, it's got. A that's cool what one. it's called, and it costs one thousand two hundred twenty-five bucks just for that paint. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> that much? God, just well, wrap I'm it for ju that I just, I'm, I just think the world of like. Pickup trucks is getting boring with color. I mean, there's black, white, and silver, and that's mostly what you see outside. You know, I'm when, not when disagreeing you look at pickup with you. trucks. Yeah, I, that's. I mean, remember when the Nissan started building a lot of yellow Frontiers? Yeah, that was and, fun. And it was kind of cool. It's yeah, like, it oh, fun. I see that truck, right? Yes. And and nobody else was really doing that. I mean, there were a couple others. Ford was doing it with the Ranger, but at a limited thing and whatever. Anyway, speaking of Toyota, should we quickly talk about Toyota? They do have a truck that kind of sort of qualifies. Yeah, let's let's do this. Okay, so, and we'll come back to more electric trucks in a moment. Um, I just needed to bridge that because it was an answer from General Motors about whether or not they actually had a super truck. Um, the Toyota Tundra TRD Pro. Now... I, don't don't throw your computer or your iPod at the wall and just say I'm tired of that. <laughs> um, first of all, the numbers are pretty impressive. It is a very fast, powerful truck. Uh, the TRD Pro package allows it to be a little bit more off-road capable. And comparable, I would say, to a Chevy uh, Trellis, you know, the 1500, or perhaps the Tremor package that Ford offers in the 15 or in the F-150. It's, it's right in that range. But there are things to be said about that powertrain. It's quite good. Yeah, the hybrid is really smooth. And that's standard. Really powerful. It's standard in the TRD Pro. Uh, and the look of it is special, right? Mm -hmm. If you look at the TRD Pro, there is no mistaking it. It has, you know, different front end. It's got that light bar right in its grill. Um, it's got cool, you know, wheel design and Cool colors as well. Yeah, I think that doesn't it have also uh, on its wheel arches, unique wheel arches. Yeah, design. like a it's a weird fender flare. Thing going yeah, on like there. little um, design, little camo designed into it. Right. It's an unusual setup. Uh, plus, you know, stickers and badges and whatnot. But I will say that the TRD Pro does a pretty good job differentiating themselves but it, from like the off road package. And definitely it's kind of begins to 
I would kind of compare it to the ZR2 almost, right? It's the um, similar price, by the way. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it actually can get quite expensive. It yeah. could be near 70 grand for a TRD Pro. Um, 33 inch tall tire approximately, mm -hmm. but there is a problem. Okay. What do you see here in the front? Do you see this plastic bumper oh, hanging yeah. down? I wasn't going to say anything because people yell at us for talking about it too much. I don't, no, 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 I'm not. <laughs> okay. No, no, I'm talking about the plastic. Okay. You know what the bison have? Steel. Has giant steel bumpers. Yeah, yeah it with does. Ground, with big clearance. Uh, the AEV design uh, is even beefier. However, I actually prefer the ZR2 design. Because that gives you a little bit more. Uh, approach. It has cut out. Yeah. yeah, for approach yeah. for your tire at least. The Toyota, the the plastic lower cladding, and, not not great. And the same thing in the rear. It also has a plastic cover in the back of the truck uh, for its bumper. And you know, we we on the last episode we talked about the new um, Tacomas and the new Forerunners um, because they now have the Trail Hunter version, right. right, of the Tacoma. Now we saw a concept of a Trail Hunter version of this, of the... Uh, we, we have. Yeah. But there's no production notice of this, and there's no production Tundra Trail Hunter that we have seen. And I think it's coming. It's just not maybe this year or next year. Right. It's maybe a little bit, a little bit down the line. Uh, but I think um, Toyota will step up and... I think uh, it's going to be pretty amazing when they do. That's right. And then uh, maybe they'll include tow hooks. Okay. I'm sorry. I didn't uh, say that. Uh, so let's continue. We did not say it. <laughs> um, tow hooks, tow hooks. And of course, um, we kind of skimmed over the GMC. Um, AT4X is the equivalent. Right. And the AT4X, which, by the way, I th yeah. it, the aesthetics, obviously, you know, that it's based on, you know, your own personal choice. I, I really like the design of the GMC AT4X. I think it's a very handsome truck. And I think it has a slightly nicer looking interior visually than the Chevrolet. But mechanically, they're very similar. And that's why we kind of are breezing over it. Yeah, and also it has a price premium. Yeah. I so, know. you know, but actually uh, I was visiting um, our friends at Complete Trailer uh, mm -hmm. yesterday because we were doing a towing um, uh, video. Yeah. And uh, we were kind of meeting some people, and we asked, which brand are you guys, you know, of truck? And this one guy said, I'm a GMC guy. He didn't say GM or Chevrolet. He said He GMC. specifically said, I'm a GMC guy, mm -hmm. which means that brand and that style really appeals to a lot of people. And they're very successful with this truck. They are very successful with it, and the AT4 has been a huge seller for them. I think that the AT4X is sort of a bit of a niche player. It's, it's, it's in the center of all that. Um, but it's not the, the, you know, and also the Denali's. They're selling the hell out of the Denali's. Yeah, yeah. Um, and they're not inexpensive. No, all not of at them all. are expensive. No, they're sitting anywhere between sixty to $100,000, depending on what truck you get. Yeah. They're really pricey. But, uh, yeah, I, if I, out of all the GM trucks, the AT4X would probably be the one I would personally buy just because it's it suits my visual sensibilities and it can seriously off-road. And you still have a diesel option as well. Exactly. That would be the diesel, yeah. no doubt. Yeah. Um, all right, so let's maybe wrap up on the electrics before we go to the heavy-duty big boys. Sounds good. So the next one on our electrics list is the Rivian R1T. You've been hearing about this truck for a long time. It sits in a weird uh, spot because it's not as big as a Cybertruck, and it's not quite the size of a mid-sized truck. It's a little bit bigger than a mid-sized truck, so it's, it's, it's kind of its own unique thing, right? Uh, its numbers are actually quite impressive. It, it, it can tow a decent amount. It can haul a decent amount, considering the fact that it is not a lightweight. Am I correct? Yeah, and the word super comes from, I mean, it was introduced with four-motor system, quad mm -hmm. motor, and what, upwards of 830-plus horsepower, and also air suspension, so it can be jacked up in the air. It can cross certain obstacles, right, mm -hmm. because of it. So I think the word super kind of just is justified. I would agree that it um, is justified. Yeah. Um, now, they do have the R1S and the R1T. The R1S is their SUV version of it, which I believe has a shorter wheelbase, but it's also a th one of the few three-passenger electric SUVs out there. Yeah. There's only a handful. Three-row, three yeah. Three-row, sorry. Yeah. Um, the truck, though, is what we're talking about, and... 
you know, I know a lot of you guys out there are like, well, if it doesn't have a frame, it's not a truck. Well, it, it, it's it's not like that at all. This is a completely different vehicle. It does have a useful bed. I think the payload's decent. What is it? Yeah, the payload is about 1,500 pounds. Yeah. So, yeah, it's comparable to many other vehicles, including yeah. the Raptor and the RHO. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, you know, we did some testing, what, a year or two ago for acceleration. Yeah. I believe, uh, well, we haven't tested the tri-motor Cybertruck yet, uh, but... Uh, the R1T beat out the Hummer because it has a slightly higher top speed. That uh, The right? Hummer kills its power at a certain speed yeah. than the, 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 the R1T. And the R1T beat everybody else, no matter if you have a TRX, a Raptor R, Lightning, Silverado EV, no, it doesn't matter. R1T is the quickest accelerating truck and also quarter mile truck in our testing. Yes. So and that makes it super. Not only that, but I believe it also beat most cars. Oh we, yeah, yeah. We we put I mean, like some really fast yeah, cars some really there. high performance cars. Yeah. It will also beat. It's remarkably um, fast. It's, it, its price is around what ninety. I mean, it starts at seventy two, seventy three. You will never find one for that much I money. Yeah, somebody wrote to me and said that they got one for the like eighty one, and that that's, was considered an could amazing be a price. Decent, decent it price. was considered amazing, and that's new, right? And now they have dual motor versions, so they have more options, mm -hmm. not just the quad motor. And they have latest software. We played around with the latest software, the, which did and, improve a few things. Yeah. It, also for towing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. But it, there are some weaknesses other than, of course, you know, being re really pricey. Uh, off road, we've still seen that it it's not. How do I put it simply? It can off road, but it doesn't really like to. So this is now typical in the electric truck space because we noticed it with the Rivian. We noticed it to some extent with the Hummer, mm -hmm. and also now Roman just noticed it with the Cybertruck, is that none of those trucks like crawling. Mm -hmm. They like going fast. You know, they're very fast, and they can go over sand dunes or, you know, dirt tracks. Or I'd dirt say that roads. goes across the board, yeah. Yeah, but they don't like crawling. And there's something having to do with they have lots of torque, but the control of that torque, right, is difficult for an electric vehicle, at least the computer system to kind of work that out. It's it's a funny thing because you would think with the, all that torque it would be easy to go over obstacles, but yes. one of the attributes to having an internal combustion when you're going up and over a rock is that you're e it's easy to modulate the amount of power that's actually going to the wheels, and you're doing it on your own. Yeah, sure, in modern trucks there definitely are some electronic nannies helping you out, traction control systems, crawl control systems, but for the most part... Basic crawling is relatively easy, but in these electric vehicles, sometimes it's all or nothing, which doesn't bode well for obstacles. <laughs> yeah, because it can kind of throw you on the side or right. something else. And you don't want to leap up and over a rock just to land on another one. You want to be able to carefully, you know, portion out that power. But also, it's uh, it's they're all a little confused sometimes from the where to put the power. Or should they put down power at all? Or maybe cu they're cutting power. That's exactly yes. it, which happened yeah. to us in the Rivian. Yes. Um, and it's happened to us in other vehicles as well, all, you know, all of them electric. So, the and once again, the Cybertruck, we recently put out a video with it in Moab, Utah. And it did well, considering that the software hadn't been updated yet for the lockers. Yeah, we didn't have lockers yet. So basically, the equivalent of open, the equivalent of open diffs. Uh, and it still did okay. But it also had that experience of cutting power. Yes. Uh, that we saw in the Rivian, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, I mean, we haven't tested the dual motor Rivian quite a lot yet. I'm hoping to soon. I am too. So, I can't wait Because to. I want to see exactly how the dual motor system will work. Right. And, uh, and we're also thinking that the mechanical locker, like the F-150 Lightning, has a mechanical locker in the rear. That should be helpful. You know, actually have a mechanical device connecting both tires um, together. Agreed. Um, Ford F-150 Lightning, we are, it's not really it's on not this. It's not super. It's not. It's not I mean, it's, it's quick. It's good. It's it, one of the things, here's, here's the biggest benefit of the F-150 Lightning. It is a Ford F-150 at the end of the day. Yeah. You, you can and hop out of a gas one and hop into this one, and you could drive it right away. Very little difference in that respect. Yeah. Right? The controls are almost identical. Right. And also, it looks standard, kind of. I mean, it's not an attention grabber like the Cybertruck or no. the Hummer. It, it'll kind of blend into the surroundings. So if you don't want attention, 
uh, as much attention. F-150 Lightning is kind of the way to go. Yeah, and it's super utilitarian if you get the onboard power, whatever they call it. Uh, yeah, yeah, the, yeah, the power. export power. Yeah, yeah. sure. Um, and I've seen people use them at actual work sites. Uh, I saw somebody camping with one recently. All of those were surprised. Actually, the majority of F-150 Lightnings, Lightnings I see now around here, Boulder, Denver area, uh -huh. have some sort of a con contractor sticker on it. Right. Either construction I've company, plumbing companies. Electricians, city company, uh, C city, oh, yeah. city vehicle. The city bought a bunch yeah. of lightnings, yeah. and they were all the pros, which uh, which were the price, yeah, you know, the, the least expensive of them. Yeah, like fifty grand to maybe At one point, what yeah. fifty five grand or something. Right. So um, with the Ford F one fifty Lightning, you're you're not getting the most powerful, and you're definitely not getting the biggest battery or the longest range. Really, when they came into the segment, I think, and I think you agree with me that Ford rushed the job to get it out there way before anybody else. Because really, other than Rivian, Ford was one of the first to have a mass-produced, fully electric pickup truck. Yeah, because Hummer wasn't selling in big numbers no, I mean, at Hummer all. at I mean, the time was a couple onesie hundred. Onesie twosies. Yeah, exactly. Uh, really. um, but it's not really super because it doesn't have a white body. No. Nope. It doesn't have an insane ground clearance. Nope. It does not. However, there is something real quick to mention. What? Ford has teased a off-roady um, kind of TRX, sorry, it's TRX, a <laughs> Raptor version of the Lightning. Now, there's no word about production. I don't even know what they called the thing. They, they had a name yes. for it. Yes, yeah, there is a name. It was a, basically a concept that they showed both at SEMA. And I think King oh, of the Hammers. Uh, sorry, not SEMA. King of the Hammers and also Chicago Auto that Show. Was it. yeah. Um, it was called Switchgear, I believe. Ah, and Switchgear, it's no, a not, weird name. Yeah, no, not 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 a great name, not at all. Um, but it was called Switchgear because uh, let me show you a picture of it, because it it could be configured as this truck on thirty sevens that you see a picture of it behind us, where it's jumping up, and where it's over jumping and thing. it's wide body and it's really mean, or it could be lowered a little with street tires, so you could switch the gear. Kind of and make it a little bit street worthy or off road worthy. Keep in mind that the F one hundred and fifty Lightning, similar to other electric pickup trucks, has a fully independent suspension. So you, you're not dealing with having to worry about your adjustments with having a solid rear axle or anything like that. You you have a completely different set of requirements. So this concept makes sense. It's questionable whether or not Ford will come will actually build it. And also, there's something else. We haven't followed this story very closely because we don't own the spy images. But there are some spy images of a camouflage lightning that looks mostly standard, like the current one. Yeah. Except it has really beefy eight lug wheels. Oh, You know, it looks like a heavy duty. Um, and it may have air suspension. We don't know. But it kind of almost seems like, you know, those big canisters um, inside yeah. the wheel wells that kind of look like air suspension. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what Ford is thinking. Are they thinking slightly heavier F uh, Lightning, maybe for more work-related purposes, or maybe a high-performance one? We, we're not quite sure. Yeah, now Ford did throttle back their production of EVs, uh, including Lightnings. Uh, part of the reason why, simply put, is that they're, they're, you know, they weren't selling as many. And I think they priced themselves a little out of the competition considering what they were building. So they're having a rethink on it in terms of their electrification strategy, but they're still the, the price fluctuated yeah, quite a lot. Yeah, yeah. it really has, and that I think is a big issue. I think Ford, out of all the smart things they've done, that's not one of them. Uh, but I think that they're going to have a rethink and and come back with a different thing. Uh, by the way, they are building eventually a small truck that may come underneath the Ford uh, Ranger in term and uh, Maverick. That's supposed to be electric, but we have not seen anything out there. I think that that might it's, that, that might be on the shelf for a little while. It's still kind of a, in the rumor stage. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mostly. Um, and then finally, you're probably wondering about Silverado EV or the Sierra EV. Um, mm. I wouldn't call these super yet. No. I mean, they're on sale. The work truck Silverado is on sale. We've tested a l it a lot. It's It has a basically 510 horsepower system, dual motor. Yeah. Ra big battery, that, humongous battery. And I think that that is it. Um, the only thing you could say that's super about it is its range. It absolutely out, there's nobody else who It outdrives close. every other pickup truck right yeah, now. Yeah, in terms of range. Uh, I put it on the range test at Denver 100 Loop, 
And um, I didn't go for 500 miles because I would lose my mind driving in circles, uh, you know. Um, <laughs> I totally get but that. I estimated 500 miles as possible mm -hmm. on one charge, which and is more than they say, and, and it's a huge amount. And that has been backed up, your claim, by others who have tested the truck, showing it easily outgoing, you know, going past the 450 mile mark. So we'll have to wait until the trail bus EV shows up. Which or, we are expecting. Or ZR2, you know, we don't know. I mean, they said trail bus is coming. Yep. They haven't mentioned ZR2 or anything No, not else. ZR2, but I know the trail um, bus, and perhaps that's gonna be enough. Roman did take one off-road, it didn't do well. Um, Once again, similar problem. Tires and... And lack line. of locker or physical locker. Right. And weight, because this ain't a light truck. No, um, this is still over 8,000 pounds uh, for a Silverado EV with oh, a big battery. Right, okay, so let's let's go uh, wrap this up with the uh, heavy duty, shall yeah, we? Yeah, so this is also a little bit controversial because heavy duty trucks are usually known for work and heavy towing. Right. But there's a recent... A really strong recent trend for off-roading. And, and who started that? Is could it be the World War II vehicle? <laughs> yeah, that's right. the power wagon. So I know how you guys are like. Oh my God, he only likes the power wagon. Power wagon don't care. Power wagon is in many ways, sort of a flashpoint of modern heavy-duty off-road pickup trucks. I think you guys will at least agree with that. Now, did other people recently do it better? I think possibly, and we'll get to that in a moment. But really, the Ram Power Wagon represents, in my mind, everything that a heavy-duty off-road truck can be with two exceptions, towing I've, and payload. Yeah. Sorry. I, I knew I, you were going to say that. Yep. It, it has to do with poundage. Yep. Really, not a lot of payload and not a lot of towing. Yep, and it's because this it's a it's a truck that's focused on the job. Right, its job is crawling and going into really really Im impossible terrain. And also right? being built beefy enough to really take a hit and and keep on yeah. going. Yeah, and it's been proven that the power wagon is extremely tough and it's very capable. Um, I'm not a big fan of its small tires. I think that it could definitely use. Yeah, that's one mod that almost everybody does probably yeah, when they buy I, a power I, wagon. I, that's probably the first thing I would do. Yeah, and the other uh, mod that uh, our friend Nina also, she has one, right? And Nina um, loves hers. Yes, and she's kept it for years, actually. Well, she's basically, she said straight out that the thing hasn't put a, a wheel wrong. It's been remarkably reliable. Yeah, Nina Barlow. Yeah. Uh, she also removed the resonator. In the, in the exhaust system. Right. Which, which doesn't affect emissions of any sort. It's just a sound device, basically. Yeah. And sh now she gets a throatier exhaust sound yeah. out of it. She actually has an interesting point about that, which is hearing your exhaust is a really good thing off-road when your head is out the window and you're accelerating up and over a rock and you want to kind of hear what your engine's doing. This is a very good point. And another reason why obnoxious exhaust is a great idea. Uh, not obnoxious. <laughs> I'm not a proponent of obnoxiousness. I'm, I'm just saying throaty, throaty nice yeah. sound. Yeah. Yes. Um, so, okay, so the, what is the power wagon? It really only comes in one flavor in terms of powertrain. Uh, although recently, uh, a couple of years ago, they added the eight speed to it. it used which to be was a six speed, I think. A big, yeah, it used to be a six and now it's eight, which was a big improvement. We tested it to be more efficient. Is it a 420 horsepower? 410. Four, is it 410? Yes. And it's, a, it's a big Hemi. Yep, it's a big Hemi. Yeah, six point um, four liter. Which it's it's, it's nice actually. There's that, nothing wrong with that setup. No, it, it it's it, I mean it's obviously not except that, payload and towing. Yeah, payload and towing. Uh, we, he mentioned four tens. Yeah, front and rear four tens. Right. Yes, yeah. lockers. Front and yeah. rear. Front and rear lockers. Articulation. Yes, please. Yes, because you can disconnect the sway bar, which is a very important thing, especially when you have a straight axle. Baby, that thing really articulates. So it does all those things quite well, and it can really go over some serious obstacles. You put the right tire on this truck, and it'll be unstoppable. However, yes. aside from that, it is also um, relatively inexpensive if you get it the right way. Yes, thank you for mentioning that. Because in 2024, this is you know right now, you could still order one as a tradesman, crew cab, shorter bed, standard bed, 4x4 with a V8, with a power wagon package. Right. This is not, it's not gonna have a fancy grill and you know, fancy bumpers. No stickers. Um, no, no stickers, no fancy interior. 
basic interior, but the power wagon package, I believe is still $8,000. You get, you know, the bigger axles with lockers, you get disconnectable sway bar, you get a winch. Yep. And you get a simple truck for not a lot of money. I believe the power wagon was the first mass produced pickup truck to come. Standard with a winch, too, by the way. Yes, now others have followed yes, suit. Yes, they have. We'll yeah. go, go over those in a minute. But the thing is, and this is this week, other than its payload and its towing, which it can haul and hoe. We've done it it's, before. It's really like a heavy-duty truck that has a payload and towing of a half ton. I would that's agree. That's the way to that's, look at that's, it. That's, which already makes some people scratch their chins. However, if you have a job that takes you off-road often... This might be the right truck for you. Border Patrol has he many has power a, wagons They love working. them, too. Yeah. The we, Tradesman Power Wagon. Yeah, we talked to a guy who was a park ranger uh, over in Moab, and he had to. they had him go to a couple of different brands, and he said, absolutely, the Power Wagon all day long. They drove the hell out of them, and they've never had a problem. They've been just monsters. They're not very efficient. Big surprise. Um, and the biggest issue, I think, is the fact that they don't offer a diesel. Right, they don't. If you do want a diesel... There's now the Rebel HD, right? But it doesn't have a winch, or still, I, I don't or the front locking differential, right? And I don't think it has a disconnecting sway bar either. N no, so there is. It does have a little bit more payload and towing, but still, I think the Rebel HD is a cool package, but it doesn't go all the way in my book. Yep. You know, you know what I'm saying. And it's only available in the 2500 series, right? So, I would still call the Power Wagon Super, and the Rebel HD is kind of a it's little you know, brother. it's kind of brother, yeah. yeah. So I agree and agree there. Um, also, where should we go now? Well, I think we should go to Ford because Ford has taken the wrapped or sorry, the uh, power wagon and kind of turned everything on its head with the tremor package. Yeah, it, they did kind of. So this is several years ago now that they introduced this Super Duty tremor. Yeah, and you know, it's not a Raptor. Don't expect this to have Fox shocks or you know adjustable suspension or anything like that. But it's a package you add to another Super Duty. For example, it's available like an XLT or a Lariat, even um, Platinum trucks or King Ranch mm -hmm. uh, trucks. You could add this package to. It gives you a lift, simple lift. Uh, the, no fancy shocks. You know, it's Ford tuned shocks. Ford tuned off road shocks. Bigger tires, 35s. Yeah. Not, you know, the Power Wagon comes on like 32, 33 ish, right? Yeah. And an option for a winch, which yes. the winch is extra, actually. So you buy the Tremor package for around 4500 bucks, and the winch, I think, is another three grand, maybe a little bit more now, That's which cheap. sounds expensive for a winch, but it's integrated into the bumper really well. And then it's and factory. It's, and it's also warranted, of course, yeah. and tested for crash protection, Yes, which is huge. It is huge. So uh, one of the things that Ford does is throughout their entire fleet of trucks, the Tremor name is, you could put on every single one of them. So there is a Maverick Tremor option. There is a Ranger Tremor option, an F-150 Tremor option, and, of course, the 250. But it also goes to 350. Yeah. Um, so you want the heavier suspension one? You got it. Exactly. And this is where they trump uh, for uh, Ram, and that is by offering a diesel powertrain. So you can either get their big V8 or their big diesel V8. And the high output diesel too. Right. So 500 horsepower. Yeah, the thing is is beefy. It's got crazy torque. And we've taken them off-road. They behave very differently than the um, the Ram, to be honest with you. It's a very different feel. But they're remarkably capable. And the bottom line is that with that big, fat diesel, you can tow a lot. You can haul a lot. I mean, I think it's a far... It's they have Higher a lot rating. of extra payload capability yeah. as well. Exactly. Not as much as a non-tremor package, but still a lot of usable payload. Right. And that's where I think Ram's going to need to go with their next generation. And, and we're hearing line. rumors that at, by the end of this year, Ram will introduce significant updates to their heavy duties. And I think it's about time. Really. I agree 100%. And their prototypes of the new Ram's heavy duties are running around. Yep. Starting to run around. So we'll see that very soon. Uh, the Ford Super Duty Tremor, just to wrap up that conversation, like you said, has a wide range of pricing because it's available on different trim levels right. and different engine options. And it's not uncommon to have um, F-350 Tremor at $100,000 with a luxury you know, side of things. We've seen it. I mean, yes. we, we've quite frankly... And, and we've and, tested a couple of them. Yeah, and, and they are incredible trucks. But perhaps... There's 
like a something different for everybody, right? So some people will really like the squishy nature of the Ram. It, it, it's a little squishier in certain ways. The Ford is a little tighter, right? It, it, I think that the way the suspension is, is designed and the way the truck feels all together, it has, uh, it's almost like a drum. And that's a good thing for some people. But then there's a third option out there that cuts the difference between everybody else. And we have also tested the hell out of this thing, at least off-road. And that would be, of course, General Motors. And they have, well, the same things. They got their uh, ZR2, was it ZR2 that they call ZR2 it? ZR2 Bison yeah, and Bison. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the 84X and AEV edition of the Sierra Heavy Which Duty. Which we just took to Moab, uh, what, three months ago? Yeah, we did. We did the big Heavy Duty comparison, right? Because, yeah. Uh, because we had the GMC 84X um, AEV edition. Mm -hmm. We had our Trail Hound, which is a Ram 2500 on 37s, mm -hmm. which we did ourselves. It wasn't a Ram package. And we had an F350, not a tremor, but an elevation off-grid truck, which was also very beefy on 37s. Very capable with an adjustable suspension, fully adjustable suspension, I should say. So um, if you looked at them together, the General Motors product, in my mind, is not quite white, the serious, crazy off-roader is the other two. But I think, yeah, so let's discuss that for yeah. just a second. Because there is no such thing as a 3,500 GM off-road truck. Correct. They only stayed like Ram in the 2,500 20, yeah. space. And I think it's because they really wanted to tune the suspension in a very precise manner, right? Which they did. Which they did. And they're using DSSV again. Yep, the, the largest version of the DSSV uh, setup, I would say. Uh, but in addition, I, um, are you able to get both the diesel and the gas? Mm -hmm. with the, so, In fact, this is funny. So I've been to a couple of events, GMC Sierra Heavy Duty 84X uh -huh. and uh, Heavy Duty ZR2. And the gas engine was not in any of those events. They were all diesels. They're all Duramax that power. Kind of explains and I things. came up to them and I said, guys, the configurator says you can put a gas engine in this. Yeah. They said yes. I said, where is it? They said, we, we're not planning on selling many of them, so we didn't bring one. So if you do want to save 10 grand, and if you don't need a diesel torque for towing, there's still the gas version available. Right, and it speaks volumes when a car company or a truck company doesn't want to bring out a powertrain because, quote unquote, they're not going to sell that many. No, it really, it's just the performance is going to suffer compared to the diesel, I would say. That's it is a heavier it. truck. I mean, it, it does have truck. armor. Oh, yeah. And, you know, steel, um, you know, skid plates are available on the Bison Heavy Duties and the AEV Edition 84Xs. They tow well. and they Yeah, we well. did eye gauntlets with them. The, the incredible capability still. I would say across the board, it's sort of, the check marks are all good. It does, I don't think it outdoes the, uh, the competition in any particular way. Uh, perhaps interior comfort if you wanted to be nitpicky. But in terms of capability, it's very capable across the board. But I don't think it does anything better, per se, than any than Ford's Tremor or the Ram Power Wagon. Yeah, and right? um, it's its own trim. So mm -hmm. you cannot add a ZR2 to something else, right? Right, right. Like a, but, but still, they have nice interiors and they have a lot of, you know, the 84Xs. You know, have massaging seats and everything like that. So, yes. I mean, it still has a lot of luxury. When we were going over some really crazy obstacles and you guys were suffering, I was I had the massage seats on full with with heat and well, the, it was I, I had to I had to you know try everything right. We have to test them all, but at the end of the day, um, you know, in terms of selecting which truck would we select? Uh, that's well, for you, you just won lottery. Yeah. Where are you moving to in this space? Not, we're not talking about midsize anymore, but in this space. The larger where, trucks. Where, or yeah. The, yeah. So where are you moving to? I'm not going to add any of the electric trucks. If I did, it would probably still be the Rivian if I just had to choose an electric truck. But that wouldn't be my first choice at all uh, in general. Um, guys, I haven't driven the... One, yeah, it? I haven't driven the RHO. I love what it looks like. Well, nobody paper. has. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But I love how it looks on paper. With that being said, I think that the Raptor R, oh, yeah, God, that thing is so good. Dude, that engine in the Raptor R revs so quickly. And it just and hauls the mail. It, it hauls, yes. And it's a pretty comfortable ride. 
It's easy to drive for such a big truck. It's very wide. I mean, it's really hard to say. If I had a choice between all of these, I know it's one of the most expensive trucks on here, but that Raptor R is just incredible. Yes, of course, I love the power wagon, but you know, unless they build a super power wagon, then the Raptor R is probably going to capture my, my vote on this list. I'm actually going to go. I've been thinking about this. It's so tough. Because there are so many really great vehicles here. If you say cyber here. truck, I'm going to stab no, you in the eye with that. No, I'm pen. not saying a cyber truck. <laughs> don't say cyber truck. I'm they're, not. They're, they're perfectly fine, but don't, dude, don't do it. Dude, cyber truck is okay, but I, I mean, I do like put my lawnmower in, in, in it and go, you know, mowing some lawns, you know, mm -hmm. across across the neighborhood. I'm not going to use a Cybertruck for that. A truck needs to do a lot of super trucky things right. for me. So I'm going to go heavy duty. Okay. No surprise. I'm going to go ZR2 Bison, I think. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's I'm a not really quite good truck. a fancy I, dude. Yeah. So the 84X is also nice. But I, I think I might go ZR2 Bison. It offers a lot. You know, 35s. It's got a locker in the back and doesn't have a front locker. But um, the heavy-duty ZR2 Bison will tow a house still. And yes, it's not a Raptor R. It's really tempting to get a Raptor R with unlimited money. But but the, but this, I will say that the um, AT4X and the ZR2 Bison, those things can go places where other heavy-duty trucks would have a hard – regular heavy-duty trucks could never yeah, hope to reach. And I'm not recommending, you know, you go to the Rubicon and the ZR2 Bison because it's still very heavy. It's still a very it's heavy a vehicle. Truck, right. But you could do, I mean, if you have a job site, you can cross mud. You know, you can cross, you know, mountains, different terrain. Stuff. You can bring your skid loader into the mountains, you know, in a certain area to build your cabin. Right. It's a super capable vehicle. And I think that's what I'm going to gravitate to. Yeah, I, I think you made a good choice. I mean, granted, mine is better because I'm fun. Well, sure. Uh, yeah, but yeah. Anyway, curious to what you got. Money, no object. Which one of these trucks would you get? Um, it. There's, and before, you know, some guys are going to mention trucks that are like a one-off or a Shelby or something. We're just talking about the mass-produced ones. Yeah, I mean, of course, there's the Hennessy's and, yeah, we're done. and others. Yeah, a 6x6 six six would be awesome, guys. I agree, but no, we're not talking about that. And as soon as G-Wagon, as soon as Mercedes buy, uh, builds a pickup truck, a G-Wagon pickup truck, they until have. then... They have. No, they don't have a... Yeah, the G-Wagon pickup. I've seen them. Where? Giant, like... Six wheel. No, no, I'm not talking about six wheel. I'm talking about regular four by four G wagon with a bed. Okay. That I haven't seen. As soon as they build that, uh, that will be my new truck. Maybe. Super truck. If it's not, if it doesn't suck, it could suck. Who knows? It, it, it might suck. Yeah, it, it might. might. Suck. And also, uh, Grenadier, they're doing the uh, quartermaster. Yeah, but it's not here yet. It's not here yet. Yeah. No. But once again, we're just All talking right. about mass produced. Well, trucks. this is another two hour show. Sorry. So thank you. <laughs> yeah. Guys, thanks for listening, and thanks for watching. We will see you next time. See you later.